It's a two-dimension collision with molecules. So you have a nitrogen molecule P traveling at a super fast speed. Pew! Collides with another stationary molecule. So I'm going to start off by writing some notes. This is our initial speed of number one. Initial speed of number two, zero. After the collision, P travels at a velocity at an angle. Q travels at another angle downwards. Ooh, this is a, I smell a, a conservation of momentum. Assume that there are no external forces, no friction, no heat loss and things like that. Uh, what is the magnitude of V after the collision? Whenever you see collision, you need to think of conservation of momentum. But in this case, since it's two dimension, you need to think of horizontal momentum and vertical momentum. So let's look at the horizontal momentum first. In the beginning, this is before anything happened. Oh, never mind, they already wrote it down there. Before, after. So before collision, what is the horizontal component, the total? There's only one guy that's moving, this one. So these are all same mass, right? They're all the same molecules. Nitrogen, right? Nitrogen molecules. Okay, so we'll assume they just have some mass M that I don't know. I'm just going to keep it as that. So M times 320 plus 0. There is nothing to add. So this will just be 320M. Is there any vertical component of motion in the beginning? No, there's none. So vertical component, don't have zero. After collision, now you have both components. Let's resolve them separately. So let's do the horizontal. Okay, what we need to find now? Uh? I think we need to find both. All right, let's do the horizontal and vertical. So for our 55, we have a horizontal and a vertical. It's going to be a bit hard to draw. Ah, yeah, let me just draw it here. Lah. Horizontal and vertical thanks to the velocity. And of course, the angle is 55. Horizontal will be horizontal velocity will be 180 adjacent hypotenuse cos 55 if I use this triangle. And the vertical will do later. The other one down here also has a horizontal component. This one will be V. Don't know what's the V? Cos 34. This is our degrees. Adjacent hypotenuse car. Yes, correct. Okay, let's add up those uh, horizontal components for first. So now we know that whatever horizontal component you had must equal to what you have before the collision, 320. So your 320, which have to be your horizontal momentum, must equal to these two now. So we have 180 cos 55 plus... V cos 34. Can we solve anything? Not yet. We have two unknown. Eh, 320M. We don't know M. We don't know V. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, never mind. We continue. Mm, let's do the vertical. So for first one, P has an upwards vertical component. This will be 180 for velocity. Yeah? Sine 55. For the other ball, going downwards, ooh, they are in opposite directions. This one is V sine 34. Let's write out their um, vertical components. So the vertical momentum also must be conserved. Before collision, it is zero, right? So we write zero. After collision, one goes up, one comes down. So must remember one is positive, one is negative. So let's just call the up one positive. Sign. Actually, let's... Ah, never mind. Sign 55 plus a negative V sine 34. I think we are ready to do our solving. So we have two equations. Which one shall we use? I think we'll try the... Vertical one first. So I'm going to take the vertical one up there. Bring it down here for some calculations because there's more space. So that will tell me that 180 sine 55 equals to V sine 34. 
I think I can find my answer. Okay, let's find the V. V should be 263.68 meter per second. That's great. I think I already found the answer. I didn't need to use the horizontal at all because we have less unknowns here. Beautiful. So based on that, if I look at the answers, I can already choose out 260, rounded off to 2SF. That would be the closest choice for this. All right, I think, I think that's it. Yeah, we don't, they give a lot of extra information. We didn't have to do the horizontal. But that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next question.